Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game to the Comp video, we have a whole bunch of information concerning AMD's Ryzen. This includes memory controller information, memory speed, uh, possible release window, and a few other bits and pieces, but also an update concerning the GTX 1080 Ti. We'll start with that one first, shall we? Because it's the quicker of the two. So the 1080 Ti was all expected. We we revved ourselves up for the announcement at the CES 2017 NVIDIA show. That's right. And there were howls of disappointment on the live stream when NVIDIA just didn't show the card. We almost expected them to kind of lead with it. And then we expected them to close the show with it as like, by the way, but no, just didn't happen. And... There were a lot of rumours and theories as to why that was, and perhaps the most obvious one, and the duh, is the, well, AMD. Quite simple. Basically, NVIDIA are nervous of what AMD are doing. And it's not just that they're nervous in terms of the performance point of view and the pricing, but they're also being kind of smart. Right now, AMD have nothing to counter NVIDIA at that particular market segment. So their theory is quite simple. Don't release the tie yet. Basically have the GTX 1080 and the Titan basically handle all of the sales. And if a user requires more performance than the 1080, they may opt to buy the Titan. And so releasing the tie could theoretically cannibalize the sales of the tie. Now I know there is a massive price disparity between the Titan and the GTX 1080 tire, well at least theoretically we don't know what it's going to launch at, but even so. However, an AIB, um, more specifically a employee of an AIB, now we don't know who this is exactly because obviously they would like to remain rather anonymous, has said that the GTX 1080 tie does exist with a website techbuyersguru.com had a um, bit of information telling us that the GTX 1080 Ti will be coming by PAX East 2017, which, just for your FYI, is a few days before my birthday. It is March the 10th, 2017. Well, about five days. Well, not, not about. Five days before my birthday, which is March the 15th, just for your FYI. So if you want to send me love and likes on the internet, I would appreciate it. Anywho... So what does that actually mean? Well, it's kind of weird because that really means that NVIDIA have nothing right this moment anyway available um, as the intermediary between the two cards and they're pretty happy with that state of affairs. I don't particularly want to get into the performance of Vega versus Pascal because quite frankly I could possibly write a novel on the various theories behind it. The most common one is that NVIDIA aren't really knowledgeable in what AMD are going to be countering them with. And the reason I say that is because AMD themselves admitted that they're still bringing up the GPU, and it's clear that the card is not ready yet. In fact, Rajar Kodori, in an interview, actually accidentally admitted that the Vega 10 that they were showing off at CES 2017 was not final, and they don't actually know if that's the full final configuration available for customers. And they are still tweaking the GPU performance and all that stuff. And as well, the drivers are still not final. I personally would, as I've said multiple times, be shocked if it really is only capable, and I refer to the high-end value here, only capable of beating the GTX 1080. And therefore, I suspect that the 1080 Ti is really where it comes down to. It's going to be very interesting to see how the next few months play out. Now, don't forget that, once again, supposedly, we're not going to be seeing Vega right now. Um, supposedly, and I know I keep saying that, but I don't want to tell you guys it's accurate, dual Vega GPUs are not going to happen until the second half of 2017, uh, probably the latter second half. So we're looking at possibly something like June, July, August time. Possibly even later, because supposedly Vega is going to launch in the early Q2-ish time. That's what the rumours are, with Ryzen releasing first. But unfortunately, we just don't have enough accurate information. And so it's going to be really interesting to see how all of this plays out 
what NVIDIA are going to counter with if Vega is considerably faster. Are they going to release the tie? Are they just going to think, like, screw it? Do they release it? Try to get as many sales out as possible. Let's face it. Let's say, for the sake of this video, let's assume Vega is 25% faster. 20, let's say 20% faster than the Titan X and roughly the same price point. Okay, let's say it's, it's 25% faster. Nice round figures. So let's say, for the sake of this video, that you get 60 FPS at whatever game with a GTX 1080 tie, whereas with Vega you get, let's say, between 70 to 80 frames a second. Let's say 75 for the sake of this video. Okay, here's my question to you. You've already got a 4K G-Sync monitor. Do you A... Okay, well, gee whiz, I'm just going to go out and buy a free sync monitor and just buy everything new. Or B, do you say, well, you know what, I'm happy to go with the slightly slower card and reevaluate my situation in several months' time. I think most people would either just stick with the GPU they have or go with the 1080 tie. So there is definitely going to be a market for the tie. It's just going to be interesting to me what happens if Vega is much faster Particularly because there are those rumours that NVIDIA are putting out the Pascal refresh. But I think there's enough of that because, quite frankly, as I said, there's so much information. I really do hope NVIDIA remain competitive to AMD. Um, but there is a part of me as well that does want AMD to have a clear win for several months. Because that would be also good for the um, competition in the long run. In the short term, it would suck for us as customers because really we're kind of forced to buy Vega. But in the long run, it's good for us as customers because it also forces NVIDIA to be kind of aggressive with their pricing and also perhaps to remain pretty on the ball. So I guess either way, as customers, we kind of get off well. Now let's move on over to Ryzen. Now, this stuff is rumor territory, so I don't want to post it as fact, but there is quite a lot of information here, so let's go through it. I'd like to give credit to Rod for sending all of this information my way. It's really cool stuff. So, first things first, a article on bitsandchips.it, um, followed by a comment by the author of the article, Futtenberg, I believe is how you pronounce his name, has said that the memory controller of Ryzen officially will support up to 3200 MHz DDR4. That's pretty much known at this point. However, unofficially, it will scale up to 4000 MHz, which is very impressive. And even more interesting is that AMD have licensed the technology from Rambus. Now, Rambus may well sound familiar to you, and indeed, their memory technology, just for your FYI, which was based on RD RAM, was used in, or rather on, the Nintendo 64 back in 1996. So they have been in the game for some time. Now, another small thing concerning this is Gamer Nexus. They have said that MSI have told them that they will be releasing the AM4 board at the end of February. And a couple of leaked images have actually popped up, which pretty much agrees with this. And yet another bitsandchips.it um, article has said that Ryzen CPUs will actually be available February slash early March. Now, I just want to add one more point of clarification. I know this is getting a bit complex, but hear me out. AMD themselves have told us that they are not aiming for the end of the uh, Q1 timeframe. So let's say, for the sake of this video, that, you know, end of Q1 equals March 31st. They are not going to release all the Ryzen CPUs on March 31st. They have said that they're aiming before that and they are on track to do so. Following on from that, they have also said it is a not going to be a paper launch, which means theoretically there will be chips available on retail shelves, which is obviously very important. There's no point in me telling you, well, it's available, go out and buy it, guys, or even if we get a review sample reviewing it and say it's the best thing since, you know, sliced bread, but you can't buy it for three months because the shop is getting like one sample a month. And the second point onto that is that the actual chips will not just be the 8 slash 16 core. AMD have confirmed that they will actually have the entire gamut of Ryzen processors. And this means that theoretically it's going to be the quad core, the hexa core, and finally the octa core. Or if you prefer, 
that would be quad as in four, six as in hexa, and octa as in eight, with each of those handling double the number of threads. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, there is a lot more stuff that we could certainly go through, especially on the GPU side of things, but I think that's just about enough for this particular video. Now, for folks who have been messaging me regarding a breakdown of Vega and a breakdown of Ryzen of what we've learned, as well as a few other bits, I know that my how does a CPU work, I can't actually remember what I called it, which is kind of ironic given it's my video, um, that got quite a lot of positive reception and quite a few folks actually asked if I could do a GPU video. I heard those comments and I will be doing how does a GPU work, but I think I'm actually going to do it a bit differently. Um, to CPU and I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. It might be a two-parter because I have a feeling that I shouldn't just do it as a As a how it works I, I think I should kind of split it up a bit differently for GPUs because they're so sodding complex I think it would work much better and I have an idea as kind of like a a proof of concept, well not a proof of concept, that's actually completely and utterly the wrong term, as kind of like a an introduction video on what everything means, and then a breakdown of how everything works. I think that might be the better way of doing it, because otherwise it's going to be really, really long and uh, not very digestible. I think that made sense, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm quite tired, so if I'm rambling, I can only apologise profusely. Anyway, I'm going to get going. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, normal things like share, subscribe, and you know all of that stuff. There will be a lot more content coming up in the next few weeks slash months. We are also getting review samples that we are going to be working on as soon as possible because a couple of them are being dispatched, I can't say anything more than that, and a couple of others we are in line for, I also can't say any more than that, as you can imagine. Uh, good old NDAs, they're friends. Um, and that's about it, actually. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.